So, by now you're probably wondering to yourself, did Bran pass the Core 1? The answer is yes. Yes, I did in fact pass the Core 1 with roughly 40 hours worth of work. I passed on my first attempt at the exam and scored a 795 out of 900. It's not the best score in the world, but when passing a 675, I was far and away from failing. Obviously, it helps a little that I had some background information regarding the materials covered on the exam. For example, I had built my own computer in the past with the help of a friend. However, outside of that, I was still very fuzzy on the main topics in the Core 1, like networking, virtualization, troubleshooting, and, to be completely honest, a lot more hardware components than I feel comfortable admitting to, meaning I had to do a lot of studying within that 40 hours. I would like to talk about the cost of this certification so far for me. The question we're trying to answer is, how much money has Brand invested so far into completing the CompTIA A+. So a quick breakdown of what I've bought so far for the CompTIA A+, Core 1, includes Professor Messer's course notes and practice tests, Mike Mayer's video program for the Core 1 on Udemy, Mike Mayer's certification passport book for the A+, which I will be using again for the Core 2, and Jason Dion's practice tests and simulations for the Core 1. I'm going to give you an accurate breakdown of all the things I've spent money on so far. To start, between Professor Messer's practice exams and course notes, I spent $40 on the Core 1. He has a $40 bundle which allows you to just buy both. For Mike Mayer's video program, I paid $12 on Udemy. For Mike Mayer's certification passport book, I paid $30. For Dion's trainings, practice tests, and simulations, I paid $10 on Udemy. Then, the bulk of the cost is the exam voucher. I spent $204 to sit for the exam, and this includes a 10% discount. So the overall total cost to finish just my Core 1 so far has been $296, just shy of $300. I can expect to pay a similar amount for my Core 2, so my A plus in total will more than likely cost me around $600 to get. However, this assumes you take the exam and pass on the first try each time. This can go much higher if you fail because to sit for the exam again, assuming you don't have a retake option, is to buy another voucher. I recommend two things. One, if you aren't confident, it will definitely cost more, but buy a voucher or buy into a program that allows you the option to retake it if you need to. To go along with this point, if you are a student in college or elsewhere, use your leverage as a student to sit for these exams at almost half off the price. It used to be that you only needed a .edu email, but with the introduction of technology and services like Sheer ID, which check with most schools to see if you are still a student with their institution, this is no longer the case where you can get away with just using your old college email. Two, just make sure you're prepared. Honestly, the worst case scenario for these tests is sitting for the exam again. However, at the very least, you will have the experience going into the exam from the first one you took. If you can avoid this, it would be the most advised, obviously. You'll save a bundle of cash and you can start focusing harder on your next exam for the A+. How do you make sure you are prepared, you ask? Simply put, use practice exams and simulations. It's important to note there aren't many free practice exams to prepare you for the core one. I think if you had to spend anywhere to study for the Core 1, it should be practice exams. There are a bunch of free questions available on crucialexams.com, I'll put a link in the description below, but I found myself being able to blaze through them. Not to mention that they don't go over the crucial PBQs which are at the front of the exam and count for a good bulk of your grade. PBQs are the most stressful portion of the exam, and it's even recommended that you skip them and come back to them. This is because multiple choice is more about recognition. You have a bunch of answers in front of you. You just need to match the question to the correct choice. No filling in the blank or being forced to remember small tidbits of info. You mainly just need to set yourself up to recognize these kinds of patterns and questions. As an example, any question involving RAID will deal with two specific ideas, but mainly one more than the other. That idea that RAID mainly deals with is redundancy. RAID stands for a redundant array of inexpensive disks. You don't need to remember that, but if you remember RAID deals with redundancy, you'll have an easier time when you come across those questions. The other idea that RAID sometimes deals with is speed. This is because RAID types like RAID 0 are arrays built for speed. So yes, if you feel comfortable doing multiple choice first because it is mainly about recognition, go for it. Personally, when I sat for the exam, I went in order starting with the PBQs and worked my way to multiple choice flagging all the PBQs as I went. And then, when I started the multiple choice, I began flagging any multiple choice I wasn't sure of. I then came back later to go over it all again, and make sure I had what I thought were the right answers. Again, the PBQs are so important. This is why you should spend at least a little money on practice tests. It will get you more prepared and have you feel more confident in the PBQs. The PBQs are not about recognition. It is a you either know it or you don't situation. If you don't know it, then you didn't study well enough. Flag it and come back later. Maybe some multiple choice will help jumpstart your memory. 
The courses I recommend, which I'm sure you've seen around the internet and are the ones I've mentioned purchasing, are Jason Dion's test prep, exams, and simulations. He goes over some of the more common PBQs you will find on the exam, and I have to say I did get very similar scenarios on my own exam. You can find the course on Udemy, again, I'll provide a link in the description below. The other option is to pay for Professor Messer's practice exams. His PBQs, being on paper, aren't as intuitive and sometimes can be downright basic, but they do help. I think the most important PBQs in his package are the ones that deal with rate arrays and port numbers. I love how he set up his port number PBQs as they get progressively harder with each iteration. Here's some basic information that I think works across the board. Recognize on exam day, you should get up early. If you need coffee, drink it. Definitely get something to eat. And just do some light flashcard studying if you have the time. I know these seem really basic, but a lot of people don't do this before an exam. Give yourself the time to wake up and be prepared for the exam. You'll be less stressed and you'll be much happier. Also, make sure, especially if you're taking it at home, that the area you want to take it in is clean and free of clutter. Not only will it put your mind at ease, but you kind of need to do this anyway before you take the exam. Finally, here are my exam tips. My tips before the exam are as follows. One, practice exams, practice exams, practice exams. I seriously cannot stress enough that you should be taking practice exams. Do as many as you can, even if you need to pay for more, you will seriously thank yourself later. Two, treat the practice exam like the real thing. Time yourself. Don't give yourself more than the allotted 90 minutes. Three, go over the practice exam again and again until all of the kings have been buffed out. You are going to get questions wrong. Go over them and try to understand why you got it wrong. Understanding is more important than recognition in this situation. This is because you are going to remember a lot of the questions. Don't just read the question and say A is the right answer because that's what the answer key told me. Rather, go over in your head why, again, that is the right answer. My tips for when you are sitting for the exam are as follows. One. Fly questions you don't feel confident about. This allows you the easy ability to come back to it later. Two, use the whiteboard provided for you. You can write notes down on it, and if you take the exam online, it's there in the UI, you just have to look for it. Unfortunately for me, I didn't find the whiteboard until the very end of the exam, and it was basically useless for me. You can quickly write things like the 17 parts you need to know, or any other information you might be worried about leaving your head. Three, don't second guess yourself. A lot of the time, the first choice you make, especially if you are prepared a lot, is the right answer. There really isn't more to say on that, but seriously, just don't do it. Second guessing yourself will cause more stress and have you take up more time on singular multiple choice questions. As stated in point one, if you are unsure, pick an answer, flag it, and move on. It is my belief, if you study well and do all of the above, I see no reason why you should fail your core one exam. In fact, I'd be confident to say that you'll more likely pass your exam on the first try. If you haven't watched it already, give my Core 1 studying video a look as well. In it, I give some studying tips that I utilized that worked for me and made me successful on the exam. I'll put a link to it in the description below. This basically covers all that I wanted to cover in this video. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video which will primarily be on the Core 2.